We've seen headline reports about solar photovoltaic power bids coming in in India at under three rupees per kilowatt hour, which is about four and a half US cents per kilowatt hour. These are record breaking. But these headline news reports can be sometimes misleading. The first question we have to ask is what is or isn't included in these numbers? Sometimes there are subsidies. In this particular case, most recently there weren't, but there were other support mechanisms such as help for land, free transmission, etc. The other issue when we look at numbers and compare them is are these the total costs over the life cycle? And one way of dealing with life cycle costs in energy and power is to use levelized cost of energy, also called LCOE. In this particular case, the headlines focused on the first year price, which was under three rupees a kilowatt hour, but there's an annual escalation included. So the actual effective price was closer to 3.3 rupees per kilowatt hour, still very low. A very important price, uh, concept when we look at LCOE is to figure out what is happening over time. A same LCOE can actually look very different. So for example, if we compare solar and coal, solar power plants are mostly about a capital investment. You buy the equipment and then there are no fuel charges, very little operations costs, some cleaning, some maintenance. Coal power plants, on the other hand, have a fuel cost which usually keeps growing over time due to inflation. The catch is, in the case of solar power, the utilization of any capacity is relatively low. If you, buy a, if you have a coal power plant, it can run for 60, 70, maybe even 80% of the time. So the plant load factor is very high. When you buy or have a one megawatt solar power plant, it'll only produce one megawatt in the middle of the day, roughly around noon. Other times, as the sun gets weaker, the output will fall and you'll get zero many parts of the day. So the average output out of a solar plant is usually in India close to 19%. So the important takeaway when we try and compare what are the costs of different power can also include a capital investment perspective. If I have one megawatt of coal or one megawatt of solar, this coal power plant can produce three to four times more energy or kilowatt hours in a given year. So that is something to keep in mind as we compare coal, solar, and all different forms of power. Now certainly renewable energy is getting cheaper, especially on the life cycle basis, but utilities do need to do their homework in understanding the total system costs of any source of power, especially renewable power, because of its intermittent and variable nature. Now this is not to say there aren't hidden costs in thermal power, especially related to the environment, but those are borne by society and not on the balance sheets of the utilities. So we do have to consider policies to address them. These hidden costs have historically been handled in the renewable sector through spreading them around or socializing them. That has worked to give support to a nascent industry, but at some point as renewable energy grows, we have to ask this question, at what point does the entree now become your appetizer? So we may need tweaks to our policies as renewable energy grows in share. A lot of people are growingly interested in solar power because the prices are falling. Now, the term grid parity is in fact used to describe the cost from renewables and especially solar power, but it's a very misleading term. From an end user perspective, if you hear newspaper reports of three or three and a half rupees a kilowatt hour. Those are for grid scale or utility scale, very large projects. If you put it on your roof, it's usually a little more expensive because you lose the economies of scale. But it's still perhaps maybe in the order of four or five rupees. And that sounds very competitive to many people who say my bill with the utility is six, seven, or maybe eight or more rupees a kilowatt hour. Now, the problem is this is not a fair comparison. The end user is only looking at solar, comparing it with their total cost, which is the end user or retail cost. You cannot compare those because when you get power from the grid, you're not just paying for the generation of power, but also the transmission, the distribution, the entire system, which has metering, backup, management, all of the above. The other problem is, of course, solar power does not displace the grid entirely because of the intermittent and time-specific nature of solar power, 
it cannot supply all your energy needs, at least not without a battery system, which raises costs tremendously. So solar and wind, most of the world today is being used as opportunistic renewable energy or opportunistic RE. What that means is you take it when the sun shines, you use it when the wind blows, but otherwise you go back to the grid. Now what that does is it raises the costs for the rest of the grid because if you reduced your use of it and in fact in the case of solar you come back to the grid in the evening which is the peak period in India. As the grid gets more expensive more people consider the use of renewables and as they use renewables more it makes the grid more expensive and that's a vicious circle also called the utility death spiral. This has not happened in India yet, but there are fears that it will happen sooner or later. It has been seen in other countries. And in India, you have an additional distortion that many consumer categories overpay for their electricity. And they will be the first ones. The ones who are cross-subsidizing other users will be the first ones who exit the grid or diminish the use of their grid through renewable energy. The fundamental problem we have is that we treat electricity like a basket of fruit. We're pricing it like rupees per kilogram, five rupees a kilo or five rupees a kilowatt hour. But this basket actually includes mangoes, lychees, bananas, watermelons, different characteristics, different time of day, different environmental impacts, different prices, but we blend it and sell it. If we actually reflect the true cost, the marginal cost, we would then recognize that we have to value different electricity differently based on these characteristics. So that is another strong policy need. In fact, if we look at what are the policy needs for India, our challenge is not energy only, but peak. The peak periods is when we may be deficit. And neither solar nor new coal plants are the answer to peak requirements in India. These record low bids have prompted a lot of people worrying that are these real? Will they happen? Or can something go wrong? Is this dumping by other countries trying to get rid of excess material that they have, for example, solar panels? When you buy a car, do you actually ask the dealer, how much profit are you making on the car? Not really. So in a truly competitive market, you shouldn't really worry about or care what is the profit margin or profitability of the supplier. Except that's not quite true. There are a couple of things you might worry about. First is, if this is unsustainable, that person may go out of business. Second, to keep costs low, are they cutting corners or quality? I'm not claiming that's the case here, but that is something people worry about. And lastly, and the most tricky question, will this continue? So we've seen historical and continued reduction in prices of solar panels and also even batteries. Now the problem is, if you want, for example, coal-based power, some years from now, you have to start planning for that today. It may take you five or seven years to actually get the coal plant built. But we don't know, nobody knows, what will be the actual costs of photovoltaics or even batteries five, seven, or ten years from now. So this makes this planning process much, much more difficult. What we do see in, in many cases is a lot of the prices of solar power have fallen because of special interest rates or because of falling uh, prices of panels. But as the price of panel, panels falls, the share in the total life cycle costs of solar attributed to panels, it decreases. You still have balance of systems, transmission, land, cleaning, etc. So perhaps the rate of reduction of solar prices may slow down in the coming years. Without getting into the specifics of this particular bid, a lot of analysts have looked at them and said, well, it's possible these are viable and they're not artificial but under specific assumptions of everything going right, getting future prices that are lower, cheap interest rates, help with the land tr transmission, etc. Everything has to go just right. Effectively, these are priced to perfection. Now, the other point that's worth noting is India has been riding a global trend in RE. It's not driving this alone. 
And much of these equipment have been based on imported technology or components. So it would be very good to have policies that increase domestic manufacturing of all the components of solar systems. Unfortunately, when you look at the comparisons in India, the cost of electricity, cost of supply chain and logistics, and the cost of capital or interest rates, those are higher than in many places. And that has limited the ability to have the components all made in India thus far. But these are things the government and many stakeholders are working on. But that doesn't mean that India can then do it cheaper. It may just become more competitive with global numbers, but then made in India.